Welcome to September's Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is Unique Paths 3. On two-dimensional grid, there are four types of squares. One represents the starting square. Two represents the ending square. Zero represents empty squares that we can walk over. And negative one represents obstacles that we cannot walk over. Now, we return the number of four directional walks. So that means our robot can go up, down, left, or right from the starting square to the ending square that walk over every non-obstacle square exactly once. Wow. So that is not going to be an easy question because we need to just forget about the DP solution because of this four dimensional, or I should say four directional walk. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to think of a way that we could cumulatively iterate and sum up paths in order. So instead, let's just think about how we could do this recursively first and, and see if that might work. Um, so what I'm going to do here is let's first copy paste this and go over every square, go over all the data that we need. Let's start with that. Okay, so we need to first figure out where we're starting from, right? Where are we starting? Where are we ending? And in order to figure out, have we walked over every single empty square possible in this grid, we also need to probably store the number of empty squares. So rather than trying to record the path, we'll just record how many empty squares have we traveled. And if the number of empty squares equals how many squares we've traveled so far, uh, in, our recur in our recursion, that means we've walked over every single empty square. Okay, so what we think we're going to do is we probably have to have some sort of visited set, right? Because we don't want to have any infinite loops occurring. We need to make sure that we're not going to go over the same square again. And how do we make sure that we're going to go through paths without ever repeating a path? Well, one way you could do that is to do a depth first search, right? So we'll go a depth first search route and we'll use this visited set um, in order to track our path that we've been through so far. And then we'll pop off the visited set and backtrack. We'll do a backtracking algorithm to make sure that uh, we don't repeat paths again or, or we don't um, not go through paths that we should in other sort of branches. Okay, so this is going to be a doozy, all right? Um, let's start with initializing the M, which will just be the length of the grid, and the N, which equals the length of the grid, zero. Now, a couple of things we want to get are the starting, ending, and number of empty squares, right? So let's, initial, um, let's initialize with starting row, starting column, ending row, and ending column. And all of these start with zero. And we don't actually need to initialize this, but just to visualize better, uh, we'll do that. And we'll also have empty squares. So we'll just call that empty. And what will that be? We'll start with zero. Okay, so first we'll go through and store all these variables. So for r in range of m and for column in range of n, we'll have to check a couple things. If grid r c, if it equals what? One, then we know that it's the starting square, right? So if it equals one, then let's make the starting r and starting column equal to the r and c. Else, if the grid is equal to uh, the ending one, which is what, two, then we're going to make our end row and end column equal to R and C. Finally, if grid RC equals zero, then let's increase our empty squares. So now, we have all the variables that we think we need. We have the starting, the ending, and the number of these squares traveled. 
All right, so now let's write our depth for search. Definition depth for search. And we're going to pass in the row, the column, the visited set, as well as the number of empty squares we've traveled so far. So I'm going to call that walk. And this is going to count up how many squares we've traveled so far. And this way we could say, all right, well, if our R is equal to the end R and C is equal to end C, well, then we should end our recursion. But let's check, hey, does the walk equal empty plus one? Because we need to make sure to count for account for the final square, which is going to be two, right? So if that is the case, then we will increase our output and say we found a path. And finally, we'll just return out of here. So I'm going to have to make this a self variable to make sure that it's not going to become a local variable. And some will consider that cheating, but hey, it's, 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 it's my solution. So. All right, so now we want to do our depth first search. Well, a couple things we want to make sure that is the case. We want to make sure that R and C are inbounds, right? So zero equals, so R has to be greater or equal to zero or less than M. And same within column, column needs to be uh, greater or equal to zero or less than N. And Let's make sure it's not an obstacle. Say grid RC is not equal to negative uh, one. And finally, we haven't visited before. So RC, this tuple, not in visited. Okay, so now that we can say, okay, we've met all our constraints, we will add it to our set. We'll say add our set RC. And we walk, um, we're going to backtrack after we're finished here. Say remove. But what do we need to do? Now we have to call our recursion, right? And we'll say for, mm, let's say i, uh, x, y, okay, let's just say i, j, in. Let's do our four directions that we can go. So we can go um, left, we can go right, we can go up and we can go down and we're going to travel all this and make sure that we call our depth first search in r plus let's see i guess it doesn't really matter r plus i c plus j so this will be the path that we're going to travel we're going to say pass the visit set and we're going to add one to the walk Make sure that we count it up. After that, we backtrack here. And that should be it. Now let's call our depth for search. What we call in there? Well, first we want to pass in the starting row, the starting column, the visit set. I guess we'll initialize that up here. The walk, which will just be zero. And if we did this right, we should just return our self.output at the end. So let's test this, make sure that I didn't make any typos. All right, so it looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit that. And accepted. So naturally, this is way different than unique paths one and two. Um, we had to go with recursion. It's time complexity wise a lot more. I think it's going to be um, an m squared times n squared solution. Uh, but considering that we only have max length of 20. I suppose that's fine for this one. Could we do better? Possibly, but um, but I, I have to say this is already a pretty complex solution. So if there's a DP solution out there, let me know. Um, I haven't researched yet, but this was my solution and it did work. So I was quite proud of that. All right. So thanks for watching my channel and remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.